Chapter Twenty Five of *The House of the Arrow* by A. E. W. Mason. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Five: The Night of the Twenty Seventh. We are not yet quite at the end," said Hanaud as he sat with Frobisher for a while upon the lawn after Ann Upcott had gone in. But we are near to it. There is still my question to be answered why was the communicating door open between the bedroom of madame harlow and the treasure room on the night when ann upcott came down the stairs in the dark when we know that we shall know why francine rollard and betty harlow between them murdered madame harlow then you believe francine rollard had a hand in that crime too asked jim i am sure returned hanaud do you remember the experiment i made the little scene of reconstruction betty harlow stretched out upon the bed to represent madame and francine whispering that will do now yes hanaud lit a cigarette and smiled francine rollard would not stand at the side of the bed no she would stand at the foot and whisper those simple but appalling words but nowhere else that was significant my friend she would not stand directly where she had stood when the murder was committed he added softly i have great hopes of francine rollard a few days of a prison cell and that untamed little tiger cat will talk and what of waberski and all this jim exclaimed and oh laughed and rose from his chair waberski he is for nothing in all this he brought a charge in which he didn't believe and the charge happened to be true that is all he took a step or two away and returned but i am wrong that is not all waberski is indeed for something in all this for when he was pressed to make good his charge and must rake up some excuse for it somehow by a piece of luck he thinks of a morning when he saw betty harlow in the street of gambetta near to the shop of jean Cladel, and so he leads us to the truth yes we owe something to that animal boris waberski did i not tell you monsieur that we are all the servants of chance hanaud went from the garden and for three days jim frobisher saw him no more but the development which monsieur bax feared and for which hanaud hoped took place and on the third day hanaud invited jim to his office in the prefecture he had jim's memorandum in his hand do you remember what you wrote he asked see he pushed the memorandum in front of jim and pointed to a paragraph but in the absence of any trace of poison in the dead woman's body it is difficult to see how the criminal can be brought to justice except by a a confession b the commission of another crime of a similar kind hanaud's theory once a poisoner always a poisoner frobisher read it through now that is very true said hanaud never have i come across a case more difficult at every step we break down i think i have my fingers on jean Cladel. i am five minutes too late i think that i shall get some useful evidence from a firm in paris the firm has ceased to be for the last ten years all the time i strike at air so i must take a risk yes and a serious one shall i tell you what that risk was i have to assume that mademoiselle anne will be brought alive to the hotel de barbrezat on the night of madame levet's ball that she would be brought back i had no doubt for one thing there could be no safer resting place for her than under the stone flags of the kitchen there for another there was the portmanteau in the side car it was not light the portmanteau some friends of mine watched it being put into the side car before young espinosa started for his rendezvous i have no doubt it weighed just as many kilos as mademoiselle anne i never understood the reason for that portmanteau frobisher interrupted it was a matter of timing there were twenty-five kilometres of a bad track with many sharp little twists between val de Zon and the hotel de brabazat and a motorcycle with an empty side-car would take appreciably longer to cover the distance than a cycle with a side-car weighted which could take the corners at its top speed they were anxious to get the exact time the journey would take with an upcod in the side-car so that there might be no needless hanging about waiting for its arrival but they were a little too careful our friend boris said a shrewd thing didn't he some crimes are discovered because the alibis are too unnaturally perfect 
oh there was no doubt they meant to bring back mademoiselle anne but suppose they brought her back dead it wasn't likely no it would be much easier to finish her off with a dose of the arrow poison no struggle no blood no trouble at all i reckoned that they would dope her at madame levet's ball and bring her back half conscious as indeed they meant to do but i shivered all that evening at the risk i had taken and when that cycle shut off its engine as we stood in the darkness of the gallery i was in despair he shook his shoulders uncomfortably as though the danger was not yet past anyway i took the risk he resumed and so we got fulfilled your condition b the commission or in this case the attempted commission of another crime of the same kind frobisher nodded but now said hanaud leaning forward we have got your condition a fulfilled a confession a clear and complete confession from francine rollard and so many admissions from the espinosas and jean leclerc and maurice thevenet that they amount to confessions we have put them all together and here is the new part of the case with which m bex and you will have to deal the charge not of murder attempted but of murder committed the murder of madame harlow jim frobisher was upon the point of interrupting but he thought better of it go on he contented himself with saying why betty harlow took to writing anonymous letters monsieur who shall say the dullness of life for a girl young and beautiful and passionate in a provincial town as our friend boris suggests the craving for excitement something bad and vicious and abnormal born in her part of her and craving more and more expression as she grew in years the exacting attendance upon madame probably all of these elements combined to suggest the notion to her and suddenly it became easy for her she discovered a bill in that box in madame harlow's bedroom a receipted bill ten years old from the firm of chaperon builders of the rue de batignolles in paris you by the way saw an unburnt fragment of the bill in the ashes upon the hearth of the treasure room this bill disclosed to her the existence of the hidden passage between the treasure room and the hotel de bravazard for it was the bill of the builders who had repaired it at the order of simon harlow an old typewriting machine belonging to simon harlow and the absolute privacy of the hotel de bravazard made the game easy and safe but as the opportunity grew so did the desire betty harlow tasted power she took one or two people into her confidence her maid francine maurice thevenet jean leclerc and jean claudel a very useful personage and once started the circle grew blackmail followed blackmail of betty harlow you understand she the little queen became the big slave she must provide thevenet with his mistress espinosa with his car and his house jean leclerc with her luxuries so the anonymous letters become themselves blackmailing letters maurice thevenet knows the police side of dijon and the province jean leclerc has a friend shall we say in the director of an insurance company and believe me for a blackmailer nothing is more important than to know accurately the financial resources of one's uh, let us say clients thus the game went merrily on until money was wanted and it couldn't be raised betty harlow looked around dijon there was no one for the moment to exploit yes one person let us do betty harlow the justice to believe that the suggestion came from that promising young novice maurice thevenet who was that person monsieur frobisher even now jim frobisher was unable to guess the truth led up to it though he had been by hanaud's exposition why madame harlow herself hanaud explained and as jim frobisher started back in a horror of disbelief he continued yes it is so madame harlow received a letter at dinner-time just as anne upcott did on the night of monsieur de poillac's ball she took her dinner in bed do you remember that night that letter was shown to jean baudin the nurse who remembers it very well it demanded a large sum of money and something was said about a number of 
passionate letters which madame harlow might not care to have published not too much you understand but enough to make it clear that the liaison of madame raviert and simon harlow was not a secret from the scourge i'll tell you something else which will astonish you monsieur frobisher that letter was shown not only to jean baudin but to betty harlow herself when she came to say good-night and show herself in her new dance frock of silver tissue and her silver slippers it was no wonder that betty harlow lost her head a little when i set my little trap for her in the library and pretended that i did not want to read what madame had said to jean baudin after betty harlow had gone off to her ball i hadn't one idea what a very unpleasant little trap it was but wait a moment frobisher interrupted if madame harlow showed this letter first of all to jean baudin and afterward to betty harlow in jean baudin's presence why didn't jean baudin speak of it at once to the examining magistrate when Waberski brought his accusation she kept silent yes she kept silent why shouldn't she returned no jean baudin is a good and decent girl for her madame harlow had died a natural death in her sleep the very form in which death might be expected to come for her jean baudin didn't believe a word of waberski's accusation why should she rake up old scandals she herself proposed to betty harlow to say nothing about the anonymous letter jim frobisher thought over the argument and accepted it yes i see her point of view he admitted and hanaud continued his narrative well then betty harlow is off to her ball on the boulevard thiers anne upcott is in her sitting-room jean baudin has finished her offices for the night madame harlow is alone what does she do drink for that night no she sits and thinks were there any of the letters which passed between her and simon harlow before she was simon harlow's wife still existing she had thought to have destroyed them all but she was a woman she might have clutched some back if there were any where would they be why in that house at the end of the secret passage some such thoughts must have passed through her mind for she rose from her bed slipped on her dressing-gown and shoes unlocked the communicating door between her and the treasure-room and passed by the secret way into the empty hotel de Brabazard. and what does she find there monsieur a room in daily use a bundle of her letters ready in the top drawer of her empire writing-table and on the writing-table simon's corona machine and the paper and envelopes of the anonymous letters monsieur there is only one person who can have access to that room the girl whom she has befriended whom in her exacting way she no doubt loved and at eleven o'clock that night francine rollard is startled by the entrance of madame harlow into her bedroom for a moment francine fancied that madame had been drinking she was very quickly better informed she was told to get up to watch for betty harlow's return and to bring her immediately to madame harlow's bedroom at one o'clock francine rollard is waiting in the dark hall as betty comes in from her party francine rollard gives her the message neither of these two girls know as yet how much of their villainies has been discovered but something at all events betty harlow bade francine wait and ran upstairs silently to her room betty harlow was prepared against discovery she had been playing with fire and she didn't mean to be burnt she had the arrow poison ready yes ready for herself she filled her hypodermic needle and with that concealed in the palm of her glove she went to confront her benefactress you can imagine that scene the outraged woman whose romance and tragedy were to be exploited blurting out her fury in front of francine rollard it wasn't raberski who was to be stripped to the skin no but the girl in the pretty silver frock and the silver slippers you can imagine the girl too her purpose changing under the torrent of abuse why should she use the arrow poison to destroy herself when she can save everything fortune liberty position by murder only she must be quick madame's voice is rising in gusts of violence even in that house of the old thick walls jean baudin some one might be awakened by the clamour 
and in a moment the brutal thing is done madame harlow is flung back upon her bed her mouth is covered and held by francine roulard the needle does its work that will do now whispers betty harlow but at the door of the treasure room in the darkness ann upcott is standing unable to identify the voice which whispered just as you and i were unable monsieur to identify a voice which whispered to us from the window of jean claudel's house but taking deep into her memory the terrible words and neither of the murderesses knew it they go calmly about their search for the letters they cannot find them because madame had pushed them into the coffer of old bills and papers they rearrange the bed they compose their victim in it as if she were asleep they pass into the treasure room and they forget to lock the door behind them very likely they visit the hotel de brabazar betty harlow has the rest of the arrow poison and the needle to put in some safe place and where else is safe in the end when every care has been taken that not a scrap of incriminating evidence is left to shout murder the next morning betty creeps up the stairs to make sure that ann upcott is asleep and ann upcott waking stretches up her hands and touches her face that monsieur and hanaud rose to his feet is what you would call the case of the crown it is the case which you and monsieur bex have to meet jim frobisher made up his mind to say the things which he had almost said at the beginning of this interview i will tell monsieur bex exactly what you have told me i shall give him every assistance that i personally or my firm can give but i have no longer any formal connection with the defence hanaud looked at frobisher in perplexity i don't understand monsieur this is not the moment to renounce a client nor do i returned frobisher it is the other way about monsieur bex put it to me very how shall i say hanaud supplied the missing word with a twitch of his lips very correctly he told me that mademoiselle did not wish to see me again hanaud walked over to the window the humiliation evident in frobisher's voice and face moved him he said very gently i can understand that can't you she has fought for a great stake all this last week her liberty her fortune her good name and you oh yes he continued as jim stirred at the table let us be frank and you monsieur you were a little different from her friends from the earliest moment she set her passion upon you do you remember the first morning i came to the maison grenelle you promised anne upcott to put up there though you had just refused the same invitation from betty harlow such a fury of jealousy blazed in her eyes that i had to drop my stick with a clatter in the hall lest she should recognize that i could not but have discovered her secret well having fought for this stake and lost she would not wish to see you you had seen her too in her handcuffs and tied by the legs like a sheep i understand her very well jim frobisher remembered that from the moment hanaud burst into the room at the hotel de brabazar betty had never once even looked at him he got up from his chair and took up his hat and stick i must go back to my partner in london with this story as soon as i have told it to monsieur bex he said i should like it complete when did you first suspect betty harlow hanaud nodded that too i shall tell you oh don't thank me i am not so sure that i should be so ready with all of these confidences if i was not certain what the verdict in the assize court must be i shall gather up for you the threads which are still loose but not here he looked at his watch see it is past noon we shall once more have philippe le bon's terrace tower to ourselves it may be too that we shall see mont blanc across all the leagues of france come let us take your memorandum and go there end of chapter twenty five